Hey Rest Friends, my name is Edie. Welcome to the Rest Friend Report. Every week, Teddy and I will recap NXT and AEW and let you know what we loved and what we didn't. This week, I'm starting off with NXT. Opening the show, we got some giant news. Double champ Keith Lee relinquished his North American title in the spirit of competition. He wanted as many people to get an opportunity to compete for the belt, and that's exactly what was happening. Then NXT General Manager William Regal announced that a series of triple threat qualifying matches would take place, leading to a ladder match at NXT TakeOver for the North American title. The first match of the night we got was overshadowed by that announcement, unfortunately. Dexter Loomis versus Killian Dane. By the end of the night, you forgot that this match even happened. Loomis put Kane to sleep and he took the win. Breeze Angle hit some super kicks. Applause, applause, they took the win. Next, we saw Shotzi Blackheart versus the Robert Stone's brand golden child, Aaliyah. Shotzi is so creative in the ring. Aaliyah had her feet on the ropes during the pins. What can you say? In the end, Robert cost Aaliyah the match. He was a distraction and Shotzi hit a diving senton for the win. Shotzi ran over his leg again and she didn't have time to celebrate her win because Mercedes Martinez came in and kicked her in the face. It was brutal. Next, we got the first triple threat qualifying match of the night, Johnny Gargano versus Bronson Reed and Roderick Strong. This match was one of my favorites, hands down. It was a thrilling triple threat match. Roderick and Gargano worked together in a few times and it was perfect and they also fought against each other really well. There was great chemistry. My anxiety was at an all-time high, I'll tell you that. And the strength of Bronson is just wow. Gargano had Strong covered but Bronson and his but Bronson hit a massive frog splash and took the win. Moving on to Timothy Thatcher versus Oni Lorcan. This match was rough and I mean it as a compliment. Every hit echoed through that performance center and these two were just insanely great. Thatcher stole the pinfall, grabbing a handful of Lorcan's tights. Adding to this, both men were placed in a triple threat qualifying match for next week against Finn Balor, okay? I'm extremely excited about this match. And you know that Batista moment where he's yelling, give me what I want. Give no. me what I want, I am Like, this is what I want. I'm excited for this match. Okay, coming down, really back in, really back in. Mercedes Martinez is now part of the Robert Stone brand. And that's all I have to say about that. In the main event, we had Karrion Cross versus Dominic Dijakovic. I really liked this match. It was great storytelling. Dijakovic was really putting up a great fight to the point where Cross got desperate and he was ignoring the counts of the ref altogether. Things got so intense that NXT champ Keith Lee came out and almost stopped the match, but Dijakovic said, no, this is my match, I can do this. Cross then choked out Dijakovic in front of Keith Lee for the win. It was intense and I loved it. Again, great storytelling from NXT. This was your NXT recap. Let's go to Teddy, who's got your AEW recap. Hey, Rest Friends, my name is Teddy. Welcome to the Rest Friend Report. AEW Dynamite started off with Cody versus independent wrestler Eddie Kingston, someone who I am not very familiar with. I've heard his name before, but I've never seen him wrestle in person. Kingston cut an amazing promo. There was also tax, there was also blood. But at the end, Cody won with a figure four. Right after that, MJF versus Griff Garrison. I didn't want to mention it, but yes, Griff Garrison does look a little bit like Jungle Boy. Um, <laughs> but MJF won, so that's why I'm not going to talk about this match because I don't care. Britt Baker, again, amazing. She's so loud, I love it. She is so dramatic, I love it. She also looks great even though she just had no surgery or something. Um, she calls herself Michael Jordan. And that's all I have to say about that. Britt Baker, Michael Jordan? Okay, I see it. <laughs> right after that, Taz and Brian Cage come out. And Taz just wants to explain why he threw in the towel for Brian Cage last week. He said that Brian Cage almost fired him for that. Which is crazy because... When he threw in the towel, I was also surprised. Right after that, we had the Young Bucks versus the Butcher and the Blade. And that was a really crazy, weird, in a good way match because it started off in the kitchen. That was really cool. They were like throwing food at each other and um, 
obviously in the beginning the butcher and the blade were doing what we imagined the butcher and the blade were doing like cutting up meat or something i don't know um they start off in the kitchen go to the go to the concourse and then they continue off to the arena they had i don't know i i don't know if it's because i'm such a young bucks mark but i think that was a very great match there was so much going on and then they cut to lance archer scary as beating up innocent people like always for the women's segment we had for the women's segment we had la cubana diamante versus boricua evelise and diamante won that match following up we had five from the dark order versus fine ass with a mask he came out with a mask right under his bandana which is a great message to send wear your freaking mask we're in the middle of a pandemic won that match of course right after he wins Cole Cabana and Brody Lee come out Brody Lee goes in the ring with a mic and he offers Hangman Page in his words protection he said that he'll never be alone wherever he goes the Dark Order will be there to have his back um pretty scary if you ask me but declined and I can offer you protection as well of course Brody Lee didn't take that very easy so he had the dark order attack which is such a low blow if you ask me but of course right after that FTR came out with a cooler to help beat up the dark order beat him up got him out of the ring and then comes Kenny very late to the party which was very weird why 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 did FTR come out first and then Kenny way after after they got the dark order out of the ring I don't know for the main event we had Chris Jericho and Jake Hager versus Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. Um, it was a great match overall, but Jericho did win the match for him and Jake Hager with a code breaker on Luchasaurus. Right after Serpentico attacked, well, he hit Luchasaurus in the back, he didn't attack him, he hit him in the back. And that's how Chris Jericho was able to do the code breaker and win the match. The Inner Circle and Serpentico go in the ring and attack Jur Jurassic Express. Which was already weird because you're like, what? Serpentico, Serpentico joining the inner circle? That was weird. They attack them. And then after they, after they were done with the attack, Serpentico goes to remove his mask and reveals that it was actually Sammy Guevara behind the mask this whole time. Chris Jericho's face was pretty priceless. He was so excited to see his boy back, which was very funny. They continue to attack Jurassic Express and then here comes Orange Cassidy and best friends and scare them off the ring. They didn't even touch them. They didn't even put a finger on them, but they ran anyway. The inner circle ran. I think it's really cool that Orange Cassidy and best friends came out to the rescue for Jurassic Express. That was this week's episode of AEW Dynamite. Please do not forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up, you guys, and have a great day.